Hello, everybody. I am so excited about today's episode with Cheryl. Normally on Mondays, we do have our Monday mystery. However, due to some filming issues we had this week, we are going to have to postpone this week's Monday mystery for next week. Gotta love this Mercury retrograde. Speaking of Mercury retrograde, the audio is a little bit delayed in this episode as well as the camera. And again, this is just technological issues. I really do believe this was a Mercury retrograde thing. The good news is, is the audio is still pretty good. So if you just listen to this episode as a podcast, that would be great. And you probably won't even notice that the, the camera is a little bit off if you just listen to it as a podcast. Uh, there are some words that I did have to mute. If you're not watching the screen, I did put the actual word up on the screen. However, if you're not watching the screen for most of these words, you will be able to figure out what was said given the context of the sentence. With that being said, I hope that you all are having a wonderful, wonderful Monday, and I hope you enjoy the episode. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. I have a very special guest today, and I know normally on Mondays we air our Mystery Monday, but because this is Mercury Retrograde, we have had some problems with our system, and so I'm so happy to have Cheryl here from Truth Seeking Gal. There is a little bit of a delay right now, guys. Again, there's some technology issues, so please, please bear with us. Again, this is Mercury Retrograde. It is what it is. But before we get started, Cheryl, I'm going to go ahead and show people your channel so I don't um, not do this later on because you are so close to a thousand subscribers. And I want to get people yeah, over. Crazy. <laughs> I, I, well, I, we're going to talk more about that because I have had the pleasure of being on your channel a couple of times now. And so it's kind of nice to now turn the tables and get a chance to interview you. And guys, I'm going to be putting all of Cheryl's links down in the description box below, but please go over to her channel and give her a subscribe. She's got great guests. Of course, there's me, um, our friend Liz from TikTok, of course. Um, you know, tons of awesome interviews on here, uh, guys. So please go over and make sure you are subscribed to Cheryl. Um, so before we get into it, or I want to make sure we got that out there before we got into it, because I want people to know more about you, Cheryl, because it takes a lot of guts to start a channel in these times. And so I want to applaud you. And for anybody out there that wants to start a channel, it does take a lot of guts because this is very tumultuous waters we're, we're trying to tread right now. And so, um, and so Cheryl, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you find yourself sitting on YouTube right now talking about a great awakening? Wow. Well, let me see here. Um, I know I have to be careful with some of the words that I say. Um, I, well, I guess let me just go back to, I've always been a faithful voter. Like I've always voted and um, love my country. Like a lot of people do, like most of us do. And I stopped watching the mainstream media. I guess I can say that. I stopped yeah. watching that because I just, it was all one-sided and and then when Mr. T ran for president, I was like, hmm, you know, and of course I didn't like the opponent, couldn't stand her and so forth and knew that he wasn't a politician. He was a businessman and all that kind of thing. So, you know, I voted for him and I was so relieved and excited, you know, when he won. And then I watched what he was doing and all the amazing things he was accomplishing. I was like, this guy is a really good guy, you know, and I didn't know a lot about him. And then of course we had the crazy sickness that you know came out and all that and i watched him and how he handled it and then when the 2020 came around um i was like all in you know and i remember standing in line with my family for like two to three hours just to vote because we wanted to vote in person mm -hmm. and it was crazy because we stood in line outside you know and um so we i knew something was up when everything happened and all that kind of stuff. And I knew something wasn't right. And it was interesting. My son had noticed, um, we went to a friend's party 
to see the results. And he noticed how the numbers had changed on the news and all that kind of stuff. And he pointed that out. And, um, and it, we knew that he had won or we thought that he had won and then everything happened. And, you know, and then from there, it was just kind of a really puzzling. It was very puzzling to, to us. And um, so then from there, I was just kind of like, I don't know. And then I just, I started following different people um, on Facebook, watching videos and that kind of stuff. And then Parlor came around, started following people on there, jumping on there. And then I was following other people and then Parlor shut down and then Telegram came up. So I was like, okay, then I went over there, you know, to Telegram. And, um, and I was just looking for alternative news outlets to see if I could find truth. Like, I think it was like the Epic, Epic Times. I don't know if I'm saying mm -hmm. that right. Some people say it differently, but yeah. Um, and then one American News Network was one mm -hmm. and right side broadcasting. And then, so I was looking for those just to see, you know, to find truth and that kind of stuff. And then I just started watching YouTube from like, you know, Facebook and stuff. I would go from there to, to YouTube and I followed um, Charlie Ward and Simon Parks. Um, bunches and I think actually um, Tom Numbers I actually found you through Tom Numbers mm -hmm. um, so just started watching everybody and taking notes and you know and um, researching and all that kind of stuff and it led me down a ton of rabbit holes and um, deep dives and I I'm, I love to research and learn like it's so much fun to do that anyway <laughs> so, so I would just start researching and looking into stuff and like oh my gosh this is fascinating and and then I found out through just the research and the hours and hours of watching videos. And it's like, there's so much more going on here than just before your election mm -hmm. or, you know, the politics or you know, with all the corruption. It's like, there's so much more here. And I was like, wow, <laughs> it just blew me away. So that kind of, you know, just step by step led me to understanding that we're going through a great awakening. So, right. Yeah, that was pretty incredible. <laughs> That, and, that's and then I, I also learned too. Like, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, that, you know, I kept seeing, you know, like the signs, all the different campaign signs about, you know, drain the. And I was like, okay, yeah, I realize there's corruption in Congress and, you know, that is, but I didn't realize like it was so much bigger than <laughs> what I was thinking. So, like, some of those campaign slogans started making sense to me. And, um, then I just started following more and more people and watching videos and just diving into information and taking notes. And I even started like a notebook. Um, I'll have to show it to you. It's not real fancy, but I started a notebook like this. And then I just put in there like, you know, the Great Awakening. I, I don't know if you can see that. And, you know, yeah. I wrote a scripture verse and I was, you know, starting to take notes on people I was following and, you know, the news media that I could kind of somewhat trust and doctors and you know so I was like making all these notes you know and, and I kept a notebook and I was like wow this is amazing so I just kept researching and researching wanted to do more but then there were times where I was like okay like I'd have to stop like it would just be too much like you know because some of the information out there that we found and things that have been going on is just like so intense and so horrible um you know that I was just like, okay, I've got to put this away. This is too crazy, you know, and I've got to stop. So that happened at times. But anyway, so I don't know if you were going to ask me another question, but no, I, I that's agree with how you. I've come about this. So if I had one word to describe this whole time period, it's pretty psychedelic because you, you do start going down this path thinking one way, knowing something isn't right. And then all of a sudden you uncover everything that everything you've been told in your life is an absolute whole faith lie. Yes. <laughs> and it, it takes, it's a traumatizing sometimes to be on this journey. It can be pretty, you know, they talk about the red pill and they also talk about the black pill and the black pill always comes with the red pill. Did you go through like a depression ever or like a mourning stage when you realize like nothing was as it seems? Yeah. Yeah, I would like for a day or two. And then I'd be like, okay, I need to take a break from this, you know, and it just, sometimes it was just so intense. And I was like, and I didn't really have anybody I could talk to about it. That was the hard part. Cause I was like, well, I want to talk to my family, but they're going to think I've lost my mind. <laughs> and I did try to share some stuff with them. And I might've probably tried to share too much at once or too many extreme, I mean, extreme things. And they were just like, mom, where are you getting your information? <laughs> so then they'd start telling my sources and stuff. So there were times, it was, I think it was harder because I felt more alone with it. 
But I mean, God helped me through it, of course. And then being able to reach out to you and other truthers and, you know, so knowing that you're not in it alone, but right. yeah, it's pr pretty intense. And there are times where you're just like, you know, but then I, you know, I would look at too, like all the amazing things that are coming. So like I found all, all the, you know, all of the horrible stuff and some of the stuff I can't even watch because I just know that it happened and I don't need to watch it, but you know what I'm talking about, the yeah. little people and so forth. But um and I just kept looking at all oh, this amazing stuff coming. And I was like, oh. so I was more clinging to that. I think I was learning all these lies and stuff, but knowing that there's hope that there's, there's good things coming that that's what's kept me going. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. So this is, this is God's battle at the end of the day. I mean, we're a part of it. And that's one thing I've noticed as of late, because even in my journey, my opinion has changed on some things from my own research. And I, I don't know if I've talked to you about this, I think I have, but um that we're not at the apocalypse. Apocalypse already happened. We're post-apocalyptic. This is literally the final battle. This is literally it. And so, um, and so this, you know, the devil doesn't go down without fight. And so, um, and so he's given it all he's got and, 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 and it, it's draining and it's daunting for us, especially when we understand, I love how you talked about that because it, this isn't at the end of the day, this isn't about politics or education or whatever. Those are just symptoms of the bigger issue. The bigger issue is this is a battle for our soul. This is spiritual. Yes. Um, and the yes. devil is not going to go down without a fight. And so, um, and so that's why it's so draining. But um, I mean, what are your thoughts on that? I, I, when, we, when this first started, did you think this maybe was the apocalypse and now your opinion shifted? Like, how do you feel about that? Um. Well, I wasn't sure because I was like, you know, we've been taught that, you know, Jesus' second coming, you know, like we're to prepare for that, you know, and most of the churches I've been in and been a part of, they don't teach you the book of Revelation, like an understanding of it, or a lot of pastors just avoid it, you know, so I was like, you know, I've read it, I've read through it, but then I've also read um, Melissa Redpill, she mm -hmm. has a book, oh, I'm not going to get the name right, I read her book. And that, that was pretty fascinating and trying to understand revelation and that kind of thing. So it's, it's mind boggling, but it's, it's amazing at the same time. So yeah, yeah it, it's, it's incredible and I love <laughs> to know that, you know, what's, what's really going on. Yeah. yeah. How we've, how we've been lied to about everything. Yeah. And <laughs> you know, literally so. everything. And I, you know, when I started my journey, I had no intention of ever going through the missing books of the Bible that I feel like that was God inspired and it's literally changed my whole perception on it hasn't it hasn't shaken my faith. It's made my faith stronger. Um, and I realized oh, this whole journey that right. my, my faith was always in God and was never in the actual story um, because we know the story is inaccurate. Um, it's not the, the, the bad guys, I'll say, have changed the story in order to mimic um, Mithraism, which is a satanic religion. And so you have to separate the Yahshua, the Christ, from the actual um, propaganda, we'll say, that's given to us through the, uh, the church, which unfortunately is part of the system. And, and that I know is, I get the biggest backlash for saying that, but it's that the truth will set you free. Like, this is, this is what the truth is. And it doesn't change God because God doesn't, God isn't just the church. God isn't just the Bible. God is bigger right. than that. And I realized too, right. that our whole history and history is my thing. Our timeline is off. They don't want us to know what the real time is. And, um, and so wow. that made me start to realize that we are in a post apocalypse. The apocalypse already happened. That already happened. Huh. And, um, and that Yahshua will be coming back, but not until after this final battle, he already came for the a thousand years of peace, uh, with the Christ consciousness. They just don't want us to know that because the devil is going to try everything he can wow. to not to, to make us ignorant to where we actually are. And that is so, in my opinion, that is so exciting because that means if you, if, if you guys know the book of revelation, it talks about how. It was going to be an apocalypse and then all this bad stuff's going to happen. And then all of a sudden, Yahshua is going to come back and rule for a thousand years. And then the devil will be released again for a short amount of time. And then there will be a final battle. Well, my friends, we're at that final battle. So what that means is there's no second chances for Lucifer. He's, he can't come back. Huh. And to me, that's, so, and that, that's then we're awesome. going to ascend. So that's mm -hmm. exciting. That's, that's, that's fascinating. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's really exciting. That's interesting. You're talking about that. It's like, for me, when I was 
learning about each of the different things, like you know, the politics and the education. And then when it came to like, I mean, I understand the difference between religion and then having a relationship with the Lord. I, I, I get that, but I know there's all these different religions and so forth, but that was kind of the hardest pill for me to swallow was learning about, I won't go into names, but learning about certain people that are ministers and pastors and what they've been doing. And that was, that was tough for me to take because, because my, you know, faith is so important to me. Like that's the most important thing to me in my life besides of course my family and stuff, but yeah, that was really, really hard to, to swallow that. Like, oh my gosh, they've even corrupted <laughs> people's what's the word faith or you know, you know, relationship or knowledge of God. And that to me was like major betrayal, <laughs> like the yes. worst, I think, you know, and I get it. it's horrible too, but don't get me wrong. But yeah. that just was hard. Yeah. And I think a lot of people I, I've noticed yeah, that, that very hard. it's a huge lesson for us. I think as believers in, in a higher power that your faith cannot be dependent upon a community or organization. It has to be through you and you right. alone. And that's what Yahshua taught anyway. Right. You know, and, uh, and that, 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 mm -hmm. and, and that is something I am disgusted. The things that I have learned about the, just the umbrella of the church has absolutely disgusted me. And I will go, there oh, are some pastors bet. out there that don't know what they're doing. Um, forgive them father for they know not what they do. Um, and they don't, you have to follow the money in the seminary schools to see how corrupt the seminary schools are. It's just this fish stinks from the head down, but some of them do know what they're doing right. and they've made right. an abomination out of something that should be a very peaceful faith. And even our Bible itself. I mean, right. I just completed a big deep dive into King James, like the King James Bible is corrupt as hell. It's, it's not, oh, I saw that. he was not, yeah. he was. He was a Satanist. And that's the, that's the yeah, yeah. That's the only English Bible we have. It, it, even the NIV, all the, the, uh, the English translations come from the King James. And so you have to be, you know, they, that MK Ultra, they like convinced us through our, our churches, like, you know, just to repeat over and over and over again the Bible's the word of God, the Bible's the word of God, the Bible's the word of God. And so when you start pointing that out to people that this might actually be corrupted, it's that cognitive dissonance, but they've done that geniusly. <sighs> And you guys, the Bible may be the word of God, but right. we haven't seen it. It's under the Vatican. We haven't seen it. They won't show it to us. Right. right. And I've heard other people's I've heard other people say too, it's you know, God's word is truth, but it's not the whole truth. Like we don't have the whole thing, the whole picture. And that, that's good to re remember. That's a really good point. And that is sad because there's a lot of pastors out there that really do care about people. You yeah. know, I've known several that really love and care about people, but they're kind of stuck in the system. Yeah. <laughs> they don't realize what it's leading to or what it's yeah. come from or whatever. So yeah, that, it's, and I've yeah. always wondered why there's so many versions of the Bible. Like there's the NIV, there's the the passion translation that, you know, and, and, and amplified. It's just like, I'd like to do that myself really. It's like, why are there so many versions, yes. you know, and it's, it's crazy, but like you said, it all goes back to the you know, King James version version, which that's, you know, <laughs> and I did watch your video. That was really good video on that. It's super correct. It makes you mad. It makes me mad anyway, because, and I only did that because I have been also been looking into like, deep fundamentalist organizations, especially since the Josh Duggar case uh, just happened here in the United States and he was convicted of oh. CP. And, and I've been reading through on uh, David Zublick's right. platform, uh, How to Train Up a Child by Michael and Debbie Pearl. I can't read it on YouTube. That's how bad the, the book is. And it's literally, to me, it reads oh, wow. as an SRA a, a book. It's teaching you how to SRA your kid. And so I started looking at these oh, like my. evangelical fundamentalists, like CULTs basically, and I'm like, this is not the teachings of Yahshua. This is not Christ consciousness. This is not, this is demonic. Wow. This is satanic. The amount of, of, of um, ABUSC, oh you know, it, this is not the same. We, we're not worshiping the same God here. The God I worship would never allow, would never want wow. this for his, his children. Um, and even the fact that they changed uh -huh. Jesus's name. Why did they change his name? Why can't we call him Yahshua? Yeah. yeah. Jesus wasn't his name. Right. Right. Why did they change that? And th that's wow. the question you have that's to start incredible. Asking. And my friend Stephanie did a deep dive into the name Jesus. And I'll, I'll direct you guys to her channel as well because she did this research. The name Jesus means Hail Satan. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. my gosh. 
So they oh, they're heavens. laughing at us. Yeah, because we're always. Oh my word! Because like everybody's talking about you know the name of Jesus, and we pray it and we sing it, and oh my. But then it's like, you know, just God knows our real intentions. Yeah, so I do believe I don't know. that. Yeah, too. that's just, that's tough. That's, that's one thing that they, this, this bad group of people yeah. can't control is your free will and intention. So regardless of whether you're using Jesus or Yah, his real name, Yahshua, um, God knows who you're talking mm-hmm. about. And uh, my friend Tamara said, you know, if right. you say Jesus Christ too, you kind of, the Christ kind of purifies the name that they have changed you know, it's just, they, they just, just have, that's, how, that's how sick these people right. are. You know, the, the, the J did not exist back then. Just makes you so angry. So angry. Right. And, and it was so right. funny because. Oh my gosh. Yeah. The gospel of Mary, uh, Mary Magdalene, who that makes, that's made me angry as well because she was the other half of the Christ consciousness. And I had this great book that my friend Cindy, uh, where it goes into her gospel and she talks about oh. the wisdom of the wrath of nice. the person. That um, that anger that we have, and I think that's what we're seeing. Okay. This great awakening is this anger we have can be, if we use it properly, it can be used to change things. You know, and and okay, good, yeah, yeah. And that was Mary teaching, and she was the other. She was the divine feminine of the divine masculine of the Christ consciousness, the Magdalene. And yeah. as we both have blue right. on the order of the blue rose, <laughs> um, so um, yes, yes. We didn't plan this either. We didn't plan we it. Know, we didn't plan it. But that's <laughs> that's you know that's what's coming back is that Magdalene. Plan. You know, they've inverted that. They took away. Not only did they change right. Joshua's name in his really his story, but they also stripped away the Magdalene, which was the other half of the Christ consciousness. And it was supposed to be in divine union. And of course they've inverted it. We know the bath from that. We know that kind of stuff. They've inverted all that, but um, it's coming back and it's, it's prophecy. It's, it's, um, right. we're not destined to be a, a, right. a planet ruled by Lucifer. So um, they got to go. <laughs> they got to go. <laughs> That's right. It's done. That's right. Out of here. Bye. See you. Bye. You guys didn't. Adios. I mean, what's it going to be? That's right. We're ready to take it back. I know. But think about this. When we move into this new ascended world, not just our bodies, but our planet, there's not going to really be any polarization anymore. It's going to be all positive. So how wild is that? Like, I've, I've been thinking, like, I don't know if we're not used to that. Like, we're not used to. No. How wild is that? That's going to be wild. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm ready for it though. <laughs> I, me too. Me too. And I've heard like, you know, you, you, you think about like all the healing we have to do because of everything they've put in our food and our water to try to, you know, uh, tox makes us, make us toxic and makes our, make our thought to separate us from God basically. And, um, and we still, we still woke up. We still, we still got here. That's right. how powerful the human that's spirit right. is. Um, and so that's super exciting, right. but it, it's going to be wild. Like to, to not have, I, you know, sorry to have been watching this, but I've even heard that as women, we're not going to have cramps anymore with our cycles, that childbirth will be easy. That's oh. what I've heard. Yeah. Great. Oh, I like that idea. That's sorry awesome. For women, you've already given birth, but for us who haven't, that's very exciting. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, yeah that for those of you who haven't I've, I've had three and i had them all natural and felt everything so yeah oh. <laughs> i'll be thrilled for every for anybody that doesn't have to <laughs> just can sneeze the baby out just a chew and there it is Boop, you have a baby no but apparently that was all the that was all the corruption of 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 satan's world is that pain and destruction and so even that in right. itself, that we, our whole uh, biology is going to be something different. That's pretty incredible that, that, oh, um, that, that nice. won't be anymore. Right. And, um, right. you know, I, I don't know what that looks like. I mean, like I said, I don't know what it looks like to not have bad guys, to not have like temptation or, um, w- what's going to happen to all our soap operas. You know, <laughs> like, I know. So, um, <laughs> What's that your history right? instead? <laughs> right? Like, and, and then um, what I hear too, that the med, when we get the med beds, that that's going to give us a lot of our information back that we lost. I hope that's going to be wild. We oh, start remembering I things. That. That's fascinating. I know. Oh, wow. I know. Well, speaking of, 
what's the wildest thing? Like if you were to talk to yourself five years ago and to tell yourself something that you believe now that you didn't believe then, like what's the wild, I'll, I'll give you an example. Like for me, um, if I had told myself five years ago that at this point in 2022, I would be questioning what the earth actually looked like myself five years ago would have told me I was crazy. So what's that thing for you that yourself five years ago would have told you you were crazy? Oh my goodness. Um, well, I guess learning about some of the people that uh, supposedly um, left the earth that are here. Is that yeah. <laughs> I, I'm I learning about yeah. 900 plus people that are still with us that didn't leave. <laughs> Isn't that wild? That's pretty incredible. When we first yeah. started hearing rumors <laughs> that Junior was still alive, I thought that was insanity. I was like, no, he's not. He's not. Alive. No, no. And Me now too. I'm like, oh, yeah, he's totally alive. <laughs> like, yeah, he's totally alive. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. <laughs> See with Diana. So totally that's been alive. so fun. That, oh, I know, that's been so fun, though, trying, finding out about all these people that are still with us that like left everything just I mean I guess they were escaping certain things but you know that they're here to help us and it's like that's going to be so exciting to see all these people come back it was yeah. interesting um I don't know if you saw my other videos that I did with Mrs. Handy are you with Kathy but we went to um, Tennessee um this past September to Graceland and I knew that he was still he's still around and as uh, someone else and so forth and it was just neat going through that because I'm like taking all these pictures and looking it up for all these clues. And I just felt like a detective. It was the funnest, most fun thing. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed going there and looking at stuff and like, oh, this probably has meaning or that, you know, has meaning. And she, uh, this is uh, where Kathy and I did like a decode with Gematria with all the pictures and the stuff that I saw there. It was really, it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. It was really neat to see. That's amazing. I, um, you know, I, I, I'm like you and I, I can't wait for us on this platform. I mean, we, we came from ordinary lives, ordinary American citizens. And I know the, the way that having this platform has shifted my life and some of the stuff I've had to go through, I, I respect them so much for what they've gone through and what they've done for humanity right. and to like walk away from a life basically in order to pull something off. Like, I mean, we t talk about Junior, but it's been, what, a little over 20 yes. years for him, but someone like Elvis, like, it's been a long time that they've had to, like, yes. take on. It was like 1977, 1977, I think. Yeah, that's a long time to, to basically walk <laughs> away from, I mean, wow. Um, I know uh, Michael Jackson, too, that whole, uh, and we know that they tried to smear him and put yes. on him what they do, and, um, but. I actually lived in Los Angeles when he, you know, passed away. And I remember walking outside of my apartment to watch the uh, helicopter or airplane. I can't remember which one it was go over with his supposedly with his body. Now I'm like, that was all uh -huh. just a stunt. Like, that was a stunt. I didn't yes. have, he wasn't in there. You know, that's wild. You know, our Freddie Mercury, uh -huh. I love Queen. So he, <laughs> Freddie Mercury was alive. I was like, yes. 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 Oh my goodness. Yeah. My son will be happy about that. He likes Queen. So yes. And what a voice. Yeah, lots too. of great artists. Yes. Yeah. Very talented. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So talented. Yeah. yeah. And so many and actors and actresses. It's like, oh wow, that'll be so awesome. It'll be just a big party for who knows how long. <laughs> I know. And, and, that, and how great is that that these people yeah. who have um you know, I think we're learning now that uh, don't ever put people on pedestals. Like that is not something we should ever be doing again, because that was the matrix system to worship celebrities. No one should be worshiped. No human being should be worshiped. We're all literally equals, you know, and, um, but to have people that people have idolized in the path, be able to explain to them, this is what happened to people that are, are still, I mean, I feel sorry for the people who are still uh -huh. that asleep that are staying with us on this earth because holy crap. They're about to get a bucket of cold water dumped on their head. Right. I mean. Oh, my. Yes, definitely. I feel lucky yeah. that I've been able to wake up slowly because to mm -hmm. learn everything at once about everything. I mean, I mean, we can't say <laughs> everything, but holy crap. Um, 
I just don't, I mean, how I know it's going to do their head in. And then you think about back to the church, like the people who are so needy and dependent on um, the organization of the church to now have to realize that this organization was not for their greatest good. And even though they're, and my friend Mm -hmm. Stephanie is going to be probably going to be opening up a sport group for pastors as well, who are like good people who are like, Oh crap, what have I done? Mm -hmm. No. Um, Right. Oh, good. That's great. Yeah. Because there are some good ones. There are some really bad ones, but there's also some good ones. That oh, my goodness. Yes. Yeah. And to have that, that, um, right. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. Sorry, there's a delay. Yeah. It's okay. It's pretty <laughs> retrograde. I think our, our viewers understand it's just the planets right now. So <laughs> whatever those are, I have no idea what those are now. I asked, I've asked a few people, I'm like, so what are the planets? Like now I'm we sure no clue what anything is like, what are the planets? <laughs> Right. <laughs> I mean, exactly. Really? Wow. Yeah. What are they? In the Apocalypse of Abraham, one of the missing books, uh, God tells <laughs> Abraham that the planets that live in the fourth, uh, the fifth firmament, are messengers, which is what angels are oh. as well. So that's interesting. Right. <laughs> that's interesting. Like Archangel Jupiter. Like oh. I don't know what are these planets. So, um, you know. But isn't it so cool? I, I, I no matter yeah. what. It's almost like that saying, uh, the more I learn, uh, the more I learn, the less I know. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I totally agree thinking. with that statement. Yeah. Totally. No clue what we're standing on. No, I don't oh, either. It's below us. <laughs> nope. <laughs> oh, <That's right. laughs> There's exactly. God. And oh that God loves gosh. us. So it's all good. That's right. <laughs> so. Exactly. Um, that's, so, yep, that's what I've clung to throughout, through all of this, you know, even the stuff that I found, that's what I've clung to is like, there's, you know, God, he's our creator. He's made amazing things and I'm just sticking with him, whatever the program is, you know? Right. So, right. Cause yeah, if you think it's, about it too much, it can do your so. head in, like it can bring you to a point oh, of like, complete, like psychosis on like what that, like, cause it's just so not what, yeah nothing is what we were told it is so right you know um right and to have him to cling to through all this is that's so helpful because you're like like because you've I've talked about it before like I've asked the question like am I losing my mind am I crazy you know all this information it's like you know like my brain is just sometimes in a fog because there's so much in there that I thought I knew that I don't and you know it's just you're constantly like reevaluating and relearning so it's good to have something to hold on to. So I'm thankful for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, and I, I, you know, the thing about our, our, our God source that the creator is that he would not have put us here on the planet at this time if, if we couldn't handle it. And I do think that in our DNA and our, and our soul, we do know what the truth is with everything, but we've just gone through the veil of third density that we're, and, and that's, I think what the med beds are going to help us remember um, who we are. And that's just my opinion. I don't know that for sure, mm-hmm. but who we actually are, right. you know, oh. brainwashing is real and we've all been su- subjected <sighs> to it. Yes. And uh, it's kind of oh like yeah. when they say in Definitely. AA, first you have to admit you have a problem. Like first you have to admit that you've been, <laughs> you've been a part of some brainwashing. Yeah. Like you first have to go, wait a minute. Yes, I was taught to believe this, but this might not be true. Um, And so just being open-minded and and knowing, Mm -hmm. and I do think once it's all revealed, we'll be fine, you know, and, and, um, and that healing will. Oh yeah. So, so, and I'm excited. I mean, you've got children. Yeah, it's been interesting. And I'm so excited for the young kids. Oh, go ahead. (laughs) Yeah, sorry guys, there's a delay. But the young kids that are coming up, like, about to enter adulthood, like how exciting is it that they're going to be coming into a world that's very different than what I entered in after college. And most people did, you know, their whole future is going to be so right. different. It's exciting. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. I have two, I have two young adult daughters and then my son is a teenager. So, and I homeschool, so I homeschooled all my kids. So oh, I didn't wow. do the usual route or whatever, but um, but yeah, so I'm finishing up. He actually has a couple more years yet. So that'll be exciting for him. And I've been trying to red pill him some and he kind of sees some of it and other things. He's like, mom, I don't know. That's a conspiracy. 
<laughs> so I'm trying to wake him up a little bit, but it's an interesting, but it will be good for him, you know, going forward. And um, I've been able to talk to my one daughter a little bit and the other one, not so much. So I don't know, just my prayers that they'll, you know, they'll wake up like everybody else, but yeah. it's just like, I want to tell you all the stuff I know and I can't. <laughs> I saw the greatest uh, meme once. It was like, going forward, I will no longer be called a conspiracy theorist, but a prophet. <laughs> I was like, I love that. I will no longer be a conspiracy theorist, like but a prophet. Because right. <laughs> everything right. that was going to happen has freaking happened. So, um, oh my so. gosh. Well, I heard this the other, I heard this the other day from someone, they were like, well, there's two groups of people. And I kind of almost wanted to add a third, but he's like, there's the conspiracy deniers, the conspiracy theorists. And I, the one I wanted to add would be the conspiracy interpreters. <laughs> I love it. So, that needs to be a t-shirt. Uh, My friend, Stephanie, and I know we, our friend Liz does t-shirts, but we've been like collecting a list of different t-shirts for the, the, for the afterwards, oh. for when all of this is done about, uh, you know, about every, you know, that's, that's right. a conspiracy interpreter. <laughs> I love it. Interpreter. Yeah. So Liz, yeah. if you're listening to this, <laughs> I'm a conspiracy read interpreter. a t-shirt, please. <laughs> yes. yes. That's right. <laughs> so it's awesome. Really I love good. that. I love that. Well, what, what has been probably the most yes. challenging thing for you being a, a face on YouTube now in this community? What has been like the most challenging thing in this journey for you? having enough time to do enough video to do my videos. I have all these ideas. I guess that's been most challenging as I have all these ideas and having time to do them all and, and amongst, you know, homeschooling and everything else. So yeah, that's probably been the biggest thing I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and I hope, and we don't know like what's going to happen with YouTube later down the road. Like I'm not attached to the platform staying up because we don't know what's going to happen. But um, I do believe that all of our videos are probably going to be saved somewhere. And and just think about, you know, somebody said this to me the other day, like okay. when, you know, a year from now or when everything has changed, you have actual like receipts that you participated. And that's pretty cool that you have oh. actual videos that you, like your receipt, yeah. like the proof that you actually, your kids can show their kids that you actually participated and, and put yourself out there. And that's, that's really cool. Um, to, to have that. And, um, you know, and, uh -huh. and that's, and what, what a, what a pride your, your, your descendants will have in that, that you actually did something. Um, and I consider everybody that watches. Yeah, that that's. Yeah. Oh, can you hear me? Did I lose you? Yeah, go ahead. No, you're fine. There's no, no, I was just saying, and I think even, even everybody who watches our, our um, channels are participating as well, you know, by sharing our stuff and, and helping us out like that. We're all in this together. And so how cool is that to actually, even though it's, it can be stressful, right. and I agree with you, it's really, there's only so many hours a day and researching, filming, editing, it, it does take a lot of time and it is a full-time job. So I, I, I get that that is, can be tough. So, um, but that's so cool that you right. have this like proof. Right. That, and plus I'm constantly watching trying to watch other people's videos to watch other people's videos, watching yours and many, many others. It's like, Oh, but I need to watch this one, but, oh, but I need to work on this. You know, and it's just, you're trying to 10 million different directions. Yeah. You know? So it's fun, but it's really challenging. It is. I never, that was the biggest yeah. um, shock for me when I started my channel, I thought it was good. And it's fun. I love doing it, but I mean, it's hard for me to get back to messages now. Like I have such a, there's so much coming at you all the time. And then plus your research and your filming, like, it's a lot. It's a lot. And so, right. um, I, I hear you it's, 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 but it's a joy to do it. So it's, it's fun. Right. And I've loved everyone. I oh think yeah. So much fun. So, and everyone I've met on this journey, including yourself, it's just changed my life. You know, I have all these like new friends, but they don't feel new. You guys, I feel like I've known you guys for like lifetimes, you know? So, um, I think that it's very divine. Yes. It's very divine. So yeah, that's, it's been an enjoyable part in not feeling, you're not feeling like you're alone. That's definitely been true. You know, meeting you and Liz and Kathy and Joe and everybody else, you know, um, I can name a whole bunch more, but yeah, that's, that's been the, a big joy in all of this is meeting everybody and just having that connection. And, you know, we're all on the same page with most things, you know, we understand and we're wanting truth. So I, I do enjoy that too. We respect you. And it's, it's true. You know, you yeah. look at like, you, the, the YouTube world is a weird world because there's so many different um, 
categories like you know you've got the drama channels you've got the how-to channels and and sometimes i will go watch some of those other um categories just to see what's going on in their world to kind of gauge what's happening with like the, the normal people or whatever um and and they're always they're always in competition with each other but over here on our oh, corner my goodness. we're all where we go when we go all like we're all together we're in this together um and that is I, I, everybody i work right. with and know in this truly believe that like there is no competition it is we are doing this together we're on the battlefield together you know, and so, and that is such a beautiful mm -hmm. thing to feel that family and to feel that camaraderie with, with everyone, you know, it's, yes, that's such a good point. I so agree with you. Cause Liz and I were talking yesterday. We were like, yeah, Bryce, she's a connector. She's <laughs> connecting everybody and, you know, bringing people together. And you were just like, we were bragging on you yesterday. So oh, I, I was just watching but it. Yeah, I, I, I totally it on my community. You. I got a little emotional. It's just, but no, it's literally <laughs> like, we are, we are, we're the way I see oh. it is. This is the battlefield. You two is the battlefield, and we're we're on the right. same side. And I don't believe at this right. point. You know, when when Mr. T said, um, you know, the storm's coming. What storm, Mr. President? What's he said three times, and he said, "You'll see." I think he meant us. We're the storm. The people. Oh, right. People. Because right. we have to. And, get and, not, and being, you know, digital warriors. Yeah, and being digital warriors, we can't be, we can't afford to be in competition with each other. Like we have to be together on the same front, you know, and pushing forward and stuff. We can't afford that. And I, I love that about the community that there's, you know, we're out to, you know, promote each other and encourage each other to to help humanity. And that's that's like the best thing, I think. Yeah. And you have to know with competition too, there's there's a sense of fear. Like when people feel like they have to compete with people, it's because there's that sense of fear. And I just don't think fear is going to have a place in our new earth. Right. There's enough to go around and, and fear, you know, as far as like, right. you know, the money, the money is going to sort itself out. I can't say too much about that. We can on YouTube, but it's going to all going to fix itself. We know that has to go down too. And so it's all going to fix itself. And it's all, it's all about humans being humans and humans need each other. Right. Humans need each other. And so, and that's the world right. that we're going into. And so we have to get rid of like that elitism and that, that idea that somebody's, you know, no one's better than anybody. Like we're all, we're all, we're all children of God. We're all special. All of us, every single one of us. And so, um, and that is, I, that's what I love right. about the community is everybody, everybody, everybody I work with and know now, believe that within their core that no that we're all we're all equal players in this and that and because of that we're a family we are a family and so we have to help each other and support right. each other through this this is tough this is a tough thing to go through and um i mean all the extraterrestrials yes. apparently watching right now with pop i when when that military back channel said that this was a movie <laughs> i think they meant for the um palladians <laughs> not for us like oh okay we're in the movie so um, they're watching and eating popcorn. do we get to take a bow do we get to i know right like where is my take a bow at the end of all this i i know that's right throw flowers throw. little insight about me i love me some flowers so where are my flowers so um, yes so no. roses We'll just, we'll just put an order, put an order in now. We'd like some, I'd like some roses. I know, ladies, <laughs> if you're listening, we want some roses. Um, so, no, and that, that's a wild for me too, is understanding like how many other beings are out there that are in God's kingdom that they didn't teach us that yeah. at vacation Bible school. <laughs> they didn't teach us that. No, no. And they're that's all a good God's point. Kingdom. Yeah, I want, I've heard that too. It's like, oh my heavens, so in addition to the 900 some people that we that are alive that are, we thought were not, that, yeah, that just blows me away. I'm like, okay, you know, God can do anything, you know, anything's yeah. possible. So, you know, <laughs> I'm open to learning about it. <laughs> and how, and for me, it's like how magnificent of, of a creator do we have that there are all these different like ecosystems of galaxies that are all under the umbrella of the creator. And they're all, they all, well, not all of them. We know the Anna knocking and the Draco or not, but most of them that are here right now love us, love us so much as humans on this earth. Oh, and, yeah, that's. And we don't even know. We can't even see them. Like we, we don't even half of us don't even know they're there. <laughs> and and they love us so much. And I've recently become more connected to that. And it's it's an overwhelming feeling of love. And they're funny. They're really funny. Um and and. Um, 
and the fact that they're battling with us and protect and help and they're cheering us on. Oh, wow. You know, and um, right. that's and that a relief. Is, it, it's, it just tell, shows you how, how magnificent God is to have like all these other beings that are here with us in God's kingdom. And um, that's something that in my deconstruction, yes. of the Bible, that's, that's one thing I've realized with the 12 tribes of Israel. They're not tribes on this planet. They're galactic tribes. That's what I believe at this point. Oh, wow. Galactic. The okay. Lyran. Wow, that's fascinating. <laughs> yeah. The Lyran group, the Lyran group is the group of the uh -huh. lion, which is the house of Judah, the tribe of Judah. Okay. Um, you start to look at like Mr. T, they called him orange man bad. Why? Because he had a golden hue. Right. That's the color of the Lyran. The lion, oh. the house of Judah, the Christ consciousness. Right. All of a sudden you go, wow, this makes so much more sense. Because we know that Abraham, in my opinion, Abraham was not a good guy. Um, oh, really? Okay. I, I didn't know that. I, that's just kind of my opinion now. I think there's a lot of biblical characters that we're going to be surprised that they kind of flip the, the script on. Um, but but so I kind of have a different view now on how that the tribes came about. I don't think they came from Jacob. I think that this is talking about something different. Okay. Um, and that's just my opinion. That's just because we know things have been so manipulated, but, um, but the right. leading group is the lion, the, the, the tribe of Judah, yeah. which is the Christ. It was where the Christ consciousness came through the house of David. So, um, and that's why mm -hmm. Trump had this art. I mean, it's so fantastic. It's, it's the, the, you know, just scratching the that's surface. That's amazing. <laughs> I know. Just scratching the surface on the truth. It's just like, Wow human beings are so cool. Like we have such a cool story and we just have no <laughs> idea. Like we have no idea. Yes. That's right. <laughs> we have no clue. Yeah. Yeah. Cause when I watched, um, yeah, I, I listened to or watched the, you know, Jesus strand one and Jesus strand two, which I know have been taken off of YouTube, but I've watched, you can watch them other places, but that just, I've listened to those. I need to go back again. I just sit there and just like you ball, like you just cry. Like, this is so incredible. This story is so incredible. Like sometimes you sit there and you're like, is this believable? Yes, this is, you know, and you're yeah. just like, wow, God had it all planned out. And it's just, it's gorgeous. It's just absolutely gorgeous. It's, it's amazing. all planned. It's all planned. And I'm just so at this point, I'm so grateful back to what we were talking about earlier that we're not heading into the apocalypse. That's, That's already amazing. happened. We are, in, right. we are ending this. This is it. This is the final, this is the final yes. countdown to get cheesy. Now that song's going to be stuck in my head all day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but, like, like anytime right. you sit at home and, and I, I, I know I say this a lot, but I hope people watching, like our friends watching right now, like you're, excuse my language. I'm about to use a bad word. So if you got kids listening, cover their ears, you're a fucking badass. Like for everybody watching, including Cheryl or you're a fucking badass. Oh, like <laughs> I hope people watching understand like the gravity of what's happening. And the fact that God was like, you need to go down there and be a part of this. That's how strong you are. And that's how special right. you are. And I think the more that everybody that's, understands yeah. that, the, the more the vibration is going to rise and the more we're going to respect each other. And, um, I mean, we're kind of right. a big deal. Humanity is kind of a big deal. We're low key. Humanity is a kind of a big deal. Right. <laughs> You know, like they, they are so afraid of us that they had to try to brainwash us. So y'all like you're, you're right. y'all, y'all, all y'all <laughs> watching right now. I'm, all a big, I just love it. I, that's, I'm never giving that up. No matter what happens in the new world, I'm going to yes. keep, I keep hold on that y'all. Yeah. You, right. you, all y'all watching right now. You are a big, please big hold on to that. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> So Hold on to that, Bryce, because that's just that's you. I love it. Uh, it's you know, and I don't think I have that much of a southern accent compared to some people I know. But I'm gonna hold on to that all y'all. So that y'all. So please do. That w it wouldn't be Bryce without it. <laughs> so I know I, I told somebody. That's great. So that's great. Women down here in the South, like old Southern women are seen as like the most polite, demure, but they're they can be savage. I, I explained to someone the other day that um when an old Southern woman says bless your heart she just called you a dumbass so southern women get a little <laughs> savage sometimes so <laughs> so an old southern woman says bless your heart she literally called you a dumbass so 
There you go. Light way. There you know. Oh, Everybody yeah. knows. Yes. So <laughs> maybe. Oh, bless your heart. That's great. Oh, heart. Oh, so. <laughs> Well, Cheryl, it's been about an hour now, and I don't want to keep you too much longer. But besides, um, I'm going to go back to your YouTube. Besides your YouTube channel, where else can people find you, Cheryl, and find all your awesome work and your awesome interviews? Um, Well, I'm trying to do Rumble. I'm up to date with the Rumble as I am with YouTube, and I'm also on Telegram. Okay. Um, and I can send you that so you can put it in the link or whatever. But yeah, so those are the two places for right now. Perfect. Um, but yeah, I've really, I've enjoyed doing this. It's been a lot of fun. Um, and I just, you know, I decided the reason I want to do my channel is like, you know, I've been researching. I want to share it with people. And um, I enjoy teaching. I have a background in, in education and I homeschool my kids. So I, I do enjoy doing that. But it, it took a couple months to think about doing a channel because I was like, should I do this or should I not? I kept going back and forth and I was like, you know, I asked God, I'm like, God, should I do this? You know, and so finally I decided and I actually started my channel in September 2021. Um, and that was the day before we left. For, yes, we left. <laughs> we left for vacation the very next day to Tennessee. And um, it's just going crazy ever since, like just. I'm just, you know, trying to share truth. And I love Gematria. I've been doing a lot of that. Um, mm -hmm. Really enjoyed it. It's fascinating. I'm hoping to do some more stuff on like um, biblical numerology. You um, should, for sure. I, I would love I to have you. And then I actually did a couple videos on. I would love to have you come back on uh, if you want, ever want to share anything on biblical Gematria because number, I was actually watching one of your episodes okay. ago earlier and he was saying he wasn't a math guy. I was never a math girl either. So um, I would love to have you, if you want to do biblical Gematria and want to come on and share that, would love that. Okay. Yeah, that would be fun. I'd really like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then I've also done a couple videos on like preparing for the great awakening. So like, I just, I'm, I'm really good. I'm really good at listening. So I've watched, listened to shows on um, the sacred blue tent mm -hmm. on telegram and just listening and, you know, listening to what people are saying and then like, Oh, well, that's something to think about that maybe I could teach other people. So I have a couple of videos on like, you know, doing your own research and the art of conversation and stuff like that. So I, you know, I have other ones in the works that I'm working on, but um, yeah, I just like to share what I'm learning and interviewing people. I didn't, I wasn't actually planning to interview people. Then I reached out to you and I reached out to some other people and I'm enjoying that. I really enjoy having other people on and talking to them and chatting and having, you know, conversation and discussing things. So I'm trying to do more of that too. So, but it's been a lot of fun and I've enjoyed it and enjoyed meeting great people like yourself and same. So it's, it's been fun. Well, guys, I will definitely have yeah. Cheryl back, and we and I know today the the technology is a little weird because it's Mercury retrograde, but um, but hopefully give Cheryl back on some round tables as well. <laughs> guys, she has so many awesome videos, so many. I know a lot of people love the interviews as well. She's got a lot of great interviews, so please go over and give Cheryl a subscribe. Again, as I've said many times, it isn't really about the numbers because none of us <laughs> are chasing like the numbers, but but with the numbers, what happens too is it pushes the more subscribers you have, the more your work gets pushed, gets pushed out. And the more our work gets pushed out, the more people we can reach and hopefully help people in this, um, do what we can to help others who are not as fortunate as we are to understand what, you know, not that we understand everything, but that, that there is stuff going on. So hopefully by subscribing to her channel, her stuff will go out more too and, and reach more people. And so where we go when we go all, we are all in this together, including everybody watching right now, because you guys are just as much a part of our platforms as we are. You actually, you guys pretty much are our platforms. And so we love each and every one of you. And um, it's an honor to be in this battle beside each and every one of you. And um, yeah, with all of us. So... <laughs> With all y'all. With all y'all. <laughs> so, um, that's, that's right. People, that's right. People move to the South. They're like, what's the difference between y'all and all y'all? I'm like, that is something you have to be born into to understand the difference. <laughs> so, um, that's, that's right. Your grandma. Right. That's right. <laughs> um, well, Cheryl, before we sign out, do you have any that's last right. parting words to our, to people watching right now, our friends watching right now? Do you have any words of encouragement or anything you want to remind people of before we say goodbye?
Sure. Um, if you want to start a channel, be brave and courageous and give it a go, definitely. And it's a learning experience. And those of us in the truth community will help you because we've been there, done that. <laughs> so I encourage anybody that wants to do that to do a channel. Um, and then just hang on to hope because great things are coming. Um, I'm so encouraged. In fact, I think I told a family member, I'm like, I have enough encouragement and, put, and just hope probably for a hundred people, just knowing some of the stuff I know. And I know I don't know everything, believe me, I don't, but just have hope and be encouraged and, you know, do things that you love and remember to hug your family and your friends and tell them you love them. So I love that. That's it. Yep. <laughs> the best is yet to come. It truly is. All right, guys. Well, we love you guys very much. Again, right. we'll subscribe to I agree. Girl, and we will put, I will put all her links down in the description box below and we will talk to you guys soon. Bye everybody.